The words we use have the power to drastically impact the lives of people for years to come. I remember I was in ninth grade. I was an eager, ambitious student who was actively involved in classes because I needed to make sure that I got all of my participation points, that I adequately added to the learning environment, but that I got an A in every single class. We were doing a unit on Shakespeare, and my teacher asked us to make predictions about how a conflict would unfold in the following act. If we're going to be honest, I had no idea. But the silence of my classmates and their blank stares led me to raise my hand to offer a prediction. To this moment, I have no idea if my answer was right or wrong, as all I was left with was his words. You see, as I paused for my other classmates to join the conversation, I noticed that my teacher had a very perplexed look on his face. And then with so much ease, and so much conviction, he looked at me and said, you have the vocabulary of a kindergartner and should refrain from speaking. I heard the oohs and the ahs from my classmates and it felt like every single eye was on me. Tears began to build in my eyes. I sank down low in my seat and I vowed never to speak in this class again. I'm not sure if my teacher was frustrated by the lack of participation from my classmates, annoyed that I always had an answer, or was just having a bad day. What I do know is that even now, today, his words ring through my head every time I'm asked to speak or write. And I never got another A in an English class again. It's often said that adulting is hard. But I would argue growing up is hard. Sure, you don't have to have a job and you don't have to pay bills, but some young people don't have it easy. And what makes my story and their stories difficult to manage is that oftentimes they are navigating those spaces without a caring adult. And when they are interacting with adults, they are met with judgment, a lack of empathy, and or inaction which means they don't get the opportunity to learn that life is really a series of challenges that you get to navigate through. And they don't get the opportunity to unpack perspectives and emotions to determine what would work best for them in any given moment. Instead, they are left feeling like they are on an island all alone and survival is not guaranteed. As adults, we must remember that our judgment, our lack of empathy and or our inaction has a negative influence on the lives of young people. Specifically, we must remember that our inaction has lifelong impact. I'm not sure I will ever forget the day that I was working in a high school. I was in the library waiting for a student to show up for tutoring when all of a sudden the door to the library flew open and in stormed this angry teenager. I mean, books started flying off shelves, curse words were echoing off the walls, and a table was in the process of being flipped. The other adults and I all looked at each other, not sure exactly what was going on. We found out later that he was a senior. And although he had come to school every single day, he did his best in every single class. His dream of being the very first person in his family to graduate from high school was no longer possible. He was ineligible for graduation. He was angry and he was frustrated and rightfully so because for the last three years, the administration and the staff have promoted him over and over and over again, but neglected to tell him he needed to retake an English and a math class from his ninth grade year. He found out two months before graduation. How would you feel if you were him? How would you respond, honestly? There are some of you who would say that you would go and have a conversation with the counselor to figure out what the credit recovery process was so that you could maybe pull off an on-time graduation. There are others of you who would try and go talk to teachers and try to prove that you knew the material and that they could waive the standard for you at that point. But let's talk about an actual 16 or 17 year old. 
Scientists will tell you that with puberty comes the rapid development of the prefrontal cortex, which is directly tied to one's emotional development and emotional response. So as adults, we must remember that when a young person is given a devastating blow or they presume failure in a particular situation, for them that failure is final and they have nothing left to lose. We have to remember that our inaction and or lack of action in other times, our oversight has lifelong impact on them. Additionally, we must remember that every moment in a young person's life impacts their emotional well-being. There was this time I was working at an after-school facility. A young lady walked in after having a very frazzled day. She was instantly questioned about where she had been because school had been out for 15 or 20 minutes at this point. She was given three different sets of instructions by three different sets of staff members that sent her running all over the building before she made her way outside to play Foursquare. And as she was playing this rather simple game of Foursquare, the ball hit her in the face. She lost it. She went charging after the person that sent the ball flying in her direction, and she was just so angry. The staff intervened, and they just kept looking at her, saying, it's just a four-square ball. Calm down. It doesn't take all that. It's just a four-square ball. But it wasn't just a four-square ball. You see, she'd been hit with balls all day long, and no one noticed. On the way to school, her mother yelled at her the entire way because she didn't clean the kitchen up the night before. She accidentally left her homework folder in the car, so she got a zero on an assignment that she had spent hours trying to complete. She spent the entire day with a teacher that didn't understand her and maybe not even like her, so she picked at every little thing she did all day long. She had to serve a lunch detention, not because she did anything, but because they said she had an attitude. And then after routing herself to the after-school facility, avoiding the fight that was happening in the front of the building, she was questioned about where she had been and why it had taken her so long to get there. Then she was given three different sets of instructions by three different staff members, and then she was hit in the face with the ball. She finally broke. The pressures of being a young person today from parents, from teachers, from friends, from themselves, from social media can be overwhelming. Overmelling to the fact that suicide is the third leading cause of death for youth between the ages of 15 and 19. I don't throw that statistic around lightly. I mention it purposefully and intentionally here so that we recognize that young people need us and they need us now. After understanding the influence that an adult can have on the life of a young person and knowing personally what it felt like to be in a room full of adults and feel completely alone, I decided that I wanted to be the adult that I never had growing up. I wanted to be the cool one that everybody wanted to gather around and do things with. I wanted to be the one that truly saw them and gave them opportunities. And I'm grateful for the last 14 years I've been able to do just that. I've developed programming and curriculum to ensure that all young people have an avenue to be successful, regardless of what they can afford. I've done the work of creating listening sessions so young people know that they can come to me and dream and think and talk about their fears and it's okay. I've also had to do the work of tearing down the doors of doubt that other adults in their lives have built because some students are college material. I've developed a plan and this is where I need your help because we actually have the power to spin the world back in the right direction and save our young people. It's called the SCS plan. It stands for support, create, and see. We must do the work of supporting nonprofit organizations who are doing the work of supporting young people. They have the skills, they have the patience, they have the programming, but they need our support. And the way that you can support these nonprofit organizations are that you can offer your time, and you can offer your funds. Offering your time means I have an hour worth of time and I would love to give back to your organization. Or I have a particular skill set and I want to offer it to your organization so that you can thrive. Consider also offering your funds. What does it mean to be a monthly donor or a regular donor to a nonprofit organization? 
so that they can sponsor the work of the young people they are trying to support. Because even though those programs are offered at a discounted rate, some young people still can't afford them. Once we've done the work of supporting nonprofit organizations, we must be committed to creating safe places for our young people. It is unimaginable for me, for me to be in the presence of a young person and them not feel safe. And it should be unimaginable for you. What does it look like to have young people gather, whether they're happy, sad, mad, glad, or indifferent, and know that they are OK to express themselves, whatever that looks like? There are young people who are carrying the trauma and the weight of the world on them, and they have nowhere to let it out. Be that safe place for them. Meet them with listening ears instead of, well, when I was your age, because times have changed. Once we've done the work of supporting nonprofits and creating safe places, it is, up last, it is up to us, lastly, to do the work of seeing young people. I know we're all busy. We're trying to get to work. We're trying to get to the grocery store. We're trying to take care of our own children. But there are times in which we see young people in the middle of a crazy situation. I challenge us in those moments to respond accordingly. You've seen them where they look like they're about to break, where they're getting yelled at in public and humiliated. In those moments when you know that they're right or you sense that something's not right about the situation, I charge you to say, hey, I see you. I saw that. That ain't right. To offer a smile. To say, hey, if you need to talk about that, I'll, I'm here. To stop being so busy that we actually see young people because they are, in fact, just that, young people, humans, worthy of grace and worthy of our time. It takes all of us to do the work of supporting young people, and all of us are able. There are lives that are hanging in the balance and waiting on us to step to the plate. There may be, in fact, another ninth grade girl who needs to hear that regardless of the level of her vocabulary, her words and her thoughts matter. But she may be waiting on you to tell her. Thank you. <laughs>